Those, those very deep wounds and those very deep pains are the very things that he'll use if you allow him to, and you'll become strong, and you'll become extraordinary in the things of God because God has never left any of us, even though many times it felt like it, even though many times it felt like, you know, if, if there's a God, how come I'm going through this, or how come I'm struggling with that, or how come this person who I love did this to me or that to me or whatever, and I'm telling you that he was still there through all of it. That's why you're here right now. And to me, today is like the beginning of the rest of your guys' lives. This is the beginning, you know. We'll never forget the things that have happened to us, but they won't have the effect on you anymore. They won't have the power over you anymore. And so I, th throughout my whole life, I dealt with all of this, this shame and rejection. But the one thing I think, if, if I did anything right, I think through it all, I kind of kept my heart right. I never really let myself get too jaded and I think for many years I talked myself into believing oh who cares who needs a, who needs a dad who needs that I don't need any of that stuff but later in my life I would find out that those would be things that I would struggle with for a long time and then one day I heard the Lord speak to me and said you're going to become for others what you wished you had for yourself I'm going to make you become the very thing that you were looking for and let me tell you what it has given my life great 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 deep purpose um this is completely aside from the fact that the, the dreams that the Lord placed in my heart as a little boy to become uh, a musician and a drummer, he fulfilled every single one of those things. But I, I want to encourage you to, um, to ask God to show you what, what he wants you to do with your life. He will use every situation, good and bad. See, that's who, how God is. And even the negative things, he will turn that into something good. He will turn that into something great. And the key to all of that is us. The key is in our heart. And I, my whole ministry is to reveal the heart of God. And I have a very soft heart for him. But like we're the ones that control the floodgate of how much we allow him in. And this is what I learned is like God will go in as, as much as you allow him. So if you let him in a little, he comes a little. If you open the valve more, he's more. When you finally realize who you are and what you're entitled to and what promises that God has given to those that are his and you begin to read the, the, the text, you begin to read the fine print, the will, that says, this is what you're entitled as my daughter. This is what, and you go, whoa, all this time I've been taking this, I've been taking this crud lying down. Just like all people dumping on me. I, I, I didn't even, excuse me, do you know who I am? But let those guards down in your heart. And there's a scripture that I live by. It's, it's uh, uh, Proverbs 4.23. It's one of my favorite scriptures in the whole Bible. And it's, uh, it says, above all else... Guard your heart, for from it spring forth all of the issues of life, because everything in your life that you will deal with will come out of your heart, everything, all the wrong things that people have done. Um, when God prospers you, it'll be a heart issue. There's people behind you that, you that are jealous of you. There's people in front of you that you could be jealous of. Everything in life has to deal with your heart, every single issue. So what I want to encourage you to do is just live out of that place. And when, when you're hurting, cry. You have to learn to live out of your heart because if you, if, you, if you live out of your head, you'll always look at the circumstances and you'll always identify with yourself. You, you, your identity is not in what happened to you that brought you here. That is not your identity. Your identity was the, the little girls that I saw when my eyes were closed, these beautiful spirits loving and singing out to their father. And I've learned to see that, and it's hard to see God as a loving father if you didn't have an example of that. And I want to I wanna offer hope to you in the sense that I know many of you might not trust other, other men or male figures. I don't know what's happened to you. But God does do work in those hearts that are willing. God do, has done an incredible work in me, and I've been married for 12 years, and even though I, didn't, I, I was never a mean husband, I was never a bad person, but I'm clearly a completely different person than I was 12 years ago. My wife would come up here and stand up and say that she married a good guy, but God turned him into a great guy. And that's through the power of the Lord, and, and, and I had something to do with it.
I let him come in and destroy all the works of hell, and I let him come and do the hard stuff and show me the the hard things about myself that I didn't realize how hard I always tried and, and how I couldn't just, I tried to do everything in my own strength because when you don't have, when you feel like God hasn't been there for you, you learn to be a self-oriented person. Well, I got to make this happen because, you know, no one's ever looked out for me and, and I got And then I started to learn how to relax and how to trust God. And one day we'll have to give an account for that gift. How did we use that? Did we, did we simply, you know, let hell just run us over? I'm telling you to fight. Fight, fight, fight. I'm a fighter, and I'm trying to rally you up to fight. Fight for the destiny that God has for you. And if you, if you read the Bible and study it, it always tells you to do, do not fear. Do not fear. Do not fear. Because fear lets the devil run your life, and faith lets God run your life. And God has always moved. The heart of God is always moved by faith. It's always moved by faith. And in moving by faith, God has done all these miraculous things. You see, we have the opportunity to break the curse. All of us in this room have been handed a curse, been handed a script. And the script said, you're a loser. <laughs> you know, and that was handed to us by other people, by circumstances, by whatever things in life, bad, bad situations. But we've been handed that. But God gives you the ability to rewrite the script. He gives you the ability to go, what? I'm going to erase this crud. I'm scratching this junk out. I'm rewriting a new script as you give it to me. I mean, the great thing about God is that's what he does. He's in, he's in the restoration business. The Bible is not a book about all these great, awesome, godly, uh, wonderful people. The Bible is a book about a bunch of people like us that are messed up, confused, jacked up, been treated wrong, been wrong, and it's a story about a great God who takes all of those people and then brings him into a place of greatness, into a place of holiness. Nothing good can ever come out of bitterness, anger, and resentment. There is, it, it is, is like literally like floating around in a septic tank. There's, there's, there's not a single attribute of God that will come out of that, despite whatever the reasons are, whatever the reasons we have to be angry. You, you opened up your heart, and you released it, and you let it go, and let, let the love of God shine through you no matter how anybody treats you. Just let, let that, and people will see the, the real God living in you because he's living in you already. The kingdom of God is so incredible and so awesome. He's just looking for a pure heart to give it to because heaven is beyond anything that any of us could ever understand or comprehend. It's so glorious. And, and how do we get that pure soul is we just we walk in, in, the, in the love of God's light. We walk and we forget about all the crud that's happened to us. We go, I'm pursuing the living God with all that I have. He's preparing you for, for this great destiny. And I want you to begin to see yourself through the eyes of God and not where you've been and not where you are. Learn to see yourself like David did. David overcame all of the circumstances in his, in his life. Because in the end, he's the only one that's going to judge us. Don't care about what anyone thinks but the Lord. Seek to please him. Be a God pleaser and not a man pleaser. People will lead you astray, even people in your family, but God will never lead you astray. Be a God pleaser, not a man pleaser, and get on fire for the Lord and be diligent to spend time in his presence. Be diligent to read his word. Be diligent to develop uh, your skills and be diligent to believe his promises. Believe the promises of God. In other words, God is able to do what he said he would do. He's able to restore people. He's able to take you from the bottom to the top. He's done it with me, and guess what? You're going to remember this. He's taken me further. 